morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us here at Bayshore Online. We are so thankful that you're here with us today, and we're just so honored that you're joining us. For those who don't know who I am, my name is Nate Williams, and I'm the online pastor here at Bayshore. And before we get any further in the service, if you could do us a favor and simply like this video on whatever platform you're watching, just to let us know that you're here, that would be great. As some of you might know, last week was our home for Christmas service, and I mean, I think it was amazing. Pastor Joel knocked it out of the park with his message, and it's just really cool to see all of the Bayshore staff come together to make that service happen. Now we hope that your Christmas was fantastic. I know that mine was. Nate, what was your favorite Christmas gift? Hey, I'm glad you asked. At first I thought it was my cool Elvis socks that my mother-in-law got me. Those were great. Then I thought, no, no, okay, it has to be the jean jacket that my wife was so kind to graciously give to me. It is very cool, I love it. But then I gave it a little bit more thought and then I knew immediately, it had to be my new wireless speaker. Make my way downtown, walking fast, faces past and I'm homebound. I'd venture to say that that was probably Jen's least favorite gift uh, that I got, but let us know in the comment section below what your favorite Christmas gift was. Also, if you're brand new to Bayshore, or perhaps you've been attending for a while and want to get more involved, if you could fill out a connection card for us, that would be great. To do that, it's super easy. Go to bayshore.online and click connect card. From there, fill out a little bit of information about yourself so that we can get to know you just a little bit better. And someone from our team is gonna reach out to you this week and send you a special gift in the mail to thank you for joining us today. Just as a friendly reminder, we are doing church online exclusively for the next few weeks until January 17th. Once again, that is January 17th. We'll be back in person. So if you head to one of our campuses before then, it's just going to be you and Jesus there, which isn't bad. Just no people. <laughs> <laughs> This year has been filled with so many great moments. So today we're gonna to take a look back at some of our favorite moments of 2020 as a church. First up, we have one of our funniest videos that we played, followed by one of our favorite sets of worship. Check it out. What type of worshiper are you? Maybe you like to keep it simple. Now this one is a classic. For those who wanna see his faithfulness, but in HD. This one was a favorite among the disciples. And for those who like to stretch the truth a little bit. And this one is for all the moms out there who just need a break. When you're just trying to let your light shine. An oldie, but a goodie. When you've tasted and seen, but you left your tums at home. Amen to that. Um, Lord, I've got a question. When the Lord keeps blessing you, and you gotta keep thanking Him. And this move was extremely popular in the 70s. When you realize that the Lord has already won the battle, after the Lord has carried you a mighty long way, when you remember that you've been washed and made new. Let faith be the song that comes to storm. 
true. My God will come through always, always. You know, we're kind of living in chaotic times at the moment, right? It's a little bit of chaos out there. I'm so thankful that we can look to a God who's not scared of the chaos. So I'm glad that God is not freaking out right now. You know, right? Like he's not panicking. He's not trying to go to plan B. Like he's, he's God. He's in control. And he's constant. And he's steady. And what he wants from us is to depend on him. In times like this, when we're not sure what's going on. And so I'm thankful that we serve a God who's so big. And he, he's so big that he's bigger than all that's going on in the world. Yet he makes himself available for us. And he's not some God that's just off on some distant planet. But he's here and he's in this room and he's with us. And he wants us to experience peace. He wants us to experience joy. He wants us to laugh and have fun. He wants us to experience all the goodness that he's laid out for you and for me. So God, we just pray this morning that as we continue with our worship service for one more few moments, Lord God, we just ask that you would just continue to bless this room, God, that you would bless this church, that you would bless the people that are in it, God, that your hand would be on them, God, that no matter what's going on this week in our own lives, God, that you would remind us this morning that you're here and you're available and that you love us like we are your sons and your daughters. And we give you praise.
As I'm sure you know by now, church is going to look a little bit different for us for the next few weeks here at Bayshore, which is why we encourage you to connect with us on social media. Social media isn't just a bunch of memes and cat videos, although those are great, but for us at Bayshore, we actually do ministry online. With all the changes that are happening these days, social media is where we post important announcements, service time changes, and all things Bayshore that you need to know. We're on a few different platforms, which is why we're asking you to be all in. Our goal for 2021 is to have as many Bayshore family members as possible all in. To be all in, just go to bayshore.online and click all in. From there, you'll see all the places where we do ministry and we strongly encourage you to follow, subscribe, and join us on what we believe will be an amazing year of ministry. As a favor to all of us here at Bayshore, if you could take some time, please make sure that you're all in. Also, let us know in the comments section below where you're watching from. Our Bayshore family is all over the world, and it's just awesome that we have this unique opportunity to worship Jesus together as one church. We now would like to give you the opportunity to worship through your giving. You can do that in three simple ways. For one, you can do that from the Bayshore app. For two, you can mail in your giving at the address at the bottom of the screen. And lastly, you can go to bayshore.online and click give. From there, it'll take you to a secure website where you can give confidently and safely. We also would like to make you aware that you can participate in our end of the year giving as well. To do that, simply go to bayshore.online, click give. From there, scroll down to the bottom of the page and where you see fund, from there, you can contribute to the Fenwick Campus launch, the Go Above Ground campaign for the Rehoboth Campus, and so much more. We just want to thank you for your continued support of all that we do here at Bayshore. Well, we're about to take a look at one of the best of messages of 2020 for our church. So if you have something to take notes with, get ready to lean in. We pray that God speaks to you in this message. looking good today. You are awake today. Uh, is, is anybody excited to be in church today? Anybody like feeling good to be in church? Good. I got to tell you, I got all the feels being with you all. And, and I know right now some of you, you here and some of you all in, in Fenwick, you're thinking like, now, who, who's this guy? Because he, he looks a lot like the normal guy. You know, they're both bald. And wildly handsome. <laughs> you weren't thinking that last part, were you? Um, but the reason I look like the normal guy is the normal guy is my dad. And, um, and he's not here today. And, and again, I know, again, what some of you are thinking. You're thinking, oh, man, Pastor Danny isn't speaking today. I am so upset about that. I know you're thinking that. I know it. But that's okay because I'm thinking the exact same thing, all right? And if this is your first time with us and you kind of enjoy today's message, come back next weekend. You should hear the normal guy. He is absolutely the best. But uh, I'm so excited to be with you guys. And three things before I get started with you. Um, first off, I like to interact, like, a lot. All right? And so um, by a show of hands, and I need every campus in on this, and, and I can see through the camera, okay? So how many of you are going to interact with me today? Put up your hands if you're going to interact with me. Good. That was a test. And you nailed it, all right? And so I, I'm feeling it. Um, the second thing is I like to have fun and laugh in church. Maybe you kind of grew up in a church where it was illegal to do that. And if you laughed in church, Brother Ron would give you like the look, you know, like the church would just stop it. Okay, like, no, no, we are not that church. All right, Brother Ron does not come here, all right? So everybody can relax and everybody can just enjoy themselves today. The third thing I wanted to point out, and this is so cool, we are all, everyone in this room, everybody watching online, we are experiencing a Bayshore first right now. We are making Bayshore history, people, because this is the first time that all three campuses have been experiencing the same message at the exact same time. Come on, somebody. <laughs> So cool. And so what's up, Bo, Dukes, and Rehoboth Beach? I miss y'all. I'll be with you in the flesh next weekend. Uh, what's up, Jeremy and Fenwick? What's up, online family? And what is up, Gumboro, the land of Scrapple? Praise the Lord, people. <laughs> Woo! 
And so we're all having a history-making moment, and so I need everybody to turn to three people, no matter what campus you're at, even if you're online in Starbucks, I need you to high-five three people and say, you're famous. You guys are doing so good participating in online family. I know you did that. Bro with family, like you all did that. Um, hey, we're talking about all the feels. And uh, today we're going to talk about fear. And so to start off talking about fear, I just kind of need to know what everybody's fears are. And so I'm going to put some different pictures up on this screen. And if you're afraid of any of these things, I just need you to put your hand in the air or scream or whatever you need to do, okay? So how many of you in this room are afraid of spiders. You're afraid of these? Anybody afraid of these? Okay. All right. Listen, anything that has more eyeballs than me, I'm out. All right. Uh, what about uh, this guy, the dentist? Anybody afraid of the dentist? Zzz, anybody? A few less people. Listen, if you drank as much Mountain Dew as me, you would be afraid of the dentist too. All right. So you're afraid I got it. Um, what, what about this? Anybody afraid of snakes? Snakes? Oh, yeah. Yes. If you did not raise your hand, listen, we released three of these at every campus today. We're going to see if you're lying, all right? I'm not even going to tell you if that's a joke or not. All right. So what about flying? Anybody afraid of being on a plane and flying? Anybody? Not so many people. What about um, snakes on a plane? Anybody afraid of snakes on a plane? Everybody. Thank you, Samuel L. Jackson. Um, well, listen, everybody is afraid of something. And quick story, um, my wife's birthday is on June 4th. Falls on the same date every year. And so this last year, I had, a, I had an idea. I was like, I am going to take my wife for her birthday to the Ocean City Boardwalk. Now, I am, I am cheap. Some people, including my wife, may or may not call me pastor type, Okay. You're not allowed to call me that, all right? But I, I'm, I'm so cheap. When I took her to the boardwalk, I was not going to pay $20 to park in the inlet parking lot. I made us ride the Ocean City bus in for $4, saved us $16. Happy birthday, babe. We're riding the bus, baby. So we rode the bus in to the inlet, and, um, and we had, like, we did the boardwalk right. All right, we ate thrashers and dumpsters at the same time. I will have a Pentecostal moment, all right? Like, it's, come on, that, we did that. We played skee ball. We got in a little photo booth, old school photo booth thing. You guys know the, about those? You want to see the picture? All right, I want to show you the picture. We'll put this on the screen. Look, isn't that like a, oh, there it is. I heard it. I need you to look at this third picture where she's kissing me. Woo. It's getting hot in here. It's hot. All right, let's move on. Um, but... So we did that, and right after we got that picture taken, my wife said, Joel, let's go, go to the haunted house. Now, I don't, I don't do haunted houses, and it's not because I'm a pastor. It's because I'm terrified, all right? And so, and think about it. Like, we pay money to stand in line to have somebody scare us to death. That is not normal, people. And so I, I thought, well, I'm not going to give Stacy what she wants on her birthday, and instead, I'm going to convince her to ride the zipper instead. Who knows about the zipper in Ocean City? Oh, yeah. All right. I wrote it when I was like 13 years old. It was an amazing time then, so I thought it would be great. And if you don't know what the zipper is, here, here's a video so you can kind of get the feel of it. Okay, that's the zipper in Ocean City. If this is not romantic, I don't know what is. And so I was like, baby, we're going to go ride the zipper. You are going to love it for your birthday. And so we, we got on the zip, like we got in the, into the death cage. Now, just remember, we had eaten thrashers and dumpsters at the exact same time. And so they closed the death cage door on us and it starts zipping. And my wife grabbed me and she said, this is not what I want for my birthday. <laughs> and we got to the top of the rotation when it's at the very top. And Stacy said to me, she said, how do we know that this door is shut and we're not going to fly out of this thing and die? And all of a sudden, my 36-year-old brain kicked in and I thought, how do we know this door is shut and we're not going to fly out and die? And for the next four minutes, that thing zipped and we screamed, let us off this ride. 
We shouldn't have eaten thrashers and dumpsters at the same time. We just were losing our, here's the thing. It was the most four, terrifying four minutes of my life. And everybody has a fear story, right? We all have things that, that we're afraid of. And, and sometimes it's small fears, like the zipper, but there's real fears. You know, maybe you're afraid of your kids getting hurt. Maybe you're changing careers and you're afraid to go back to college. Maybe you're afraid of raising teenagers. Hello. Amen. Maybe you are afraid of like starting a new business venture or something related to your health. The, the point is at some point in life, we're all on the zipper and we're all afraid, right? And so today I want to talk to you about how you can get the most out of fear. Because I believe that not all fear is all bad. I believe that every emotion is from God. And so I believe that every emotion can be good, but every emotion can, can go bad. Now, I know what, what some of you guys are thinking right now. I, I know what some of you in Fenwick are thinking right now. I can feel it all the way in Gumboro. You're thinking, how in the world is fear good, Pastor Tight? <laughs> Listen. Here's how fear is good, because fear alerts us to danger in our life, right? Fear says, hey, Joel, don't take your wife to ride the zipper for her birthday, no mo." Fear alerts us to danger in our life. Okay, so like when I was a teenager, I was down in the Outer Banks, and we were surfing. A bunch of um, my best friends were down there surfing, and we were on some random drive-on beats down there, and I'm down there with like my brother Tim, Bo Dukes, our worship leader in Rehoboth. We're like all having an amazing time, and while I was out surfing, my buddy Andrew paddled up to me, and he said, Joel, I think I saw a shark. And all of a sudden, I heard this sound in my head. Maybe you've heard this sound before when you've been in the ocean. Dun-dun. Dunna, dunna. Okay, have you ever heard that in the ocean before? It's not where you want to hear that sound, okay? You want to hear it on your, in your couch, in your living room, okay? And so I swam in, this is a true story, I swam in faster than Michael Phelps. And I paddled right by my brother Tim. I paddled right by Bo Dukes, our Rehoboth Campus um, uh, worship leader. And I didn't even tell them about the shark. Because I was going to get to the beach. And so I'm just standing on the beach. And finally, everyone like came in because I was standing on the beach. And Bo said to me, he's like, Joel, why did you paddle in? And I said, because there's a shark out there. And he said, well, why didn't you tell us? We're like your best friends. I'm like, somebody needs to live to tell the story. I don't know. For 17 years, Bo has been reminding me of that story. But that's what fear does. Like fear alert. It's the emotion that alerts us to danger, okay? Fear stops us from taking the wrong job. It stops us from marrying the wrong person. It stops us from ignoring the doctor's orders. Fear kept me from wearing my Ravens jersey in the Philadelphia Eagles Stadium in preseason this year. So how many of you would say that fear has kept you from some danger at some point in your life? Fear has kept you from some danger? Yeah. So fear is God's gift to us that can alert us to danger in our life. But the problem is when we give fear a louder voice, then we give our faith. And one of the things that I've noticed so many times in my life is that God wants me to step through my fear so I can step forward in faith. So I can step forward in faith. And so listen, everybody in Fenwick, everybody in, in Rehoboth, this is so important Fear is okay to have a voice in your life, but faith should always get the final vote. Faith should always get the final vote because if fear gets the final vote in your life, you'll never take a risk. You'll never do anything. We will wrap our kids in bubble wrap for the rest of their life, okay? And let me just tell you, your kids do not want to be wrapped in bubble wrap. And so no risk means no reward. Faith should always get the final vote in our life. Why? Because I believe the best things in your life sit right on the other side of your greatest fears. And so we're going to talk about that today. If you brought your Bible, head on over to Numbers chapter 13. I'm going to be reading out of uh, one of the Bibles that we just give out for free around here. If you're here and you don't have a Bible, one of the best things that we can do when you leave today is to give you a Bible for free. They're all sitting in the back of this room. So when you walk out of here, they are free. They're not like free 99. They are free. So take one before you leave today. But we're going to be in Numbers chapter 13. Here's the, here's the context of what's going on. Moses has just led over a million people out of slavery in Egypt. And they're, they're walking through the desert, and they're on the way to the promised land. Now, the promised land is going to be good. The Bible says it's a land flowing with milk and honey. 
Modern day translation it is a land flowing with dumpsters and thrashers. It is going to be good. And so Moses is leading all these people to the promised land. But before they go in, Moses is like, I need to send some spies in to just make sure it's all good. And so he sends, sends 12 spies in to spy it out for 40 days. And then when they come back, these spies, they basically have a press conference in front of all of the Israelites. And this is what the spies say. Numbers chapter 13, starting in verse 27. The spies said, we entered the land. You, Moses, sent us to explore. And it is indeed a bountiful country. A land flowing with milk and honey. Here is the kind of fruit it produces. Now, I just imagine in this moment that somebody held up a Bennett Orchard's peach. Fenwick, you know about those Bennett Orchard peaches. Okay, so somebody holds up this amazing fruit from the promised land. And then, what, what's this, this word say? But, here's the kind of fruit it produces. But, the people living there are powerful. And their towns are large and fortified. We even saw giants there, the descendants of Enoch. And so these spies saw things that, first off, amped up their faith. They're like, we saw milk. We saw honey. We saw Bennett Orchard's peaches. Come on. But we also saw things that amped up our fear. They're like, we saw big towns. We saw big people. We saw big walls. It is basically Texas over there. Some of you will get that. Okay, anyway. But in life, there's always going to be things that amp up our fear. And there's always going to be things that amp up our faith. And so all I want to do today is give you two ways that you can amp up your faith in your life. And so if you're taking notes, you can write this down. If you're not taking notes, I always tell us to Rehoboth Campus, write this down. Okay, so the first thing is this. If you want to amp up your faith, you have to first stop feeding your fears. Stop feeding your fears your fears. Now there's um, a picture going around the internet of these kids that are answering the question, what scares you the most? And it's super funny. And so does anybody want to see it? Anyone want to see it? Okay. So here we go. It's kind of hard to read. So I'm going to read it for you. We'll put this on the screen. These kids are asked, what scares you the most? So Paul up top here says, what scares you the most? He says, werewolves. Now I get that. All right, I'm, I saw one of those Twilight episodes. Okay, werewolves are scary, all right? So what scares you the most? Werewolves, they asked Nina, what scares you the most? And she says, sharks. I feel that, right? Nina, if you ever see a shark, tell your friends, or they will remind you for 17 years that you did not tell them, okay? So we got werewolves, Paul's afraid of, sharks for Nina. And then they asked Dylan, what scares you the most? Dylan says, the unstoppable marching of time that is slowly guiding us all towards an inevitable death. Dang, Dylan, somebody needs to get Dylan a Happy Meal or something, okay? So he's like, <laughs> he just broke it down, all right? And then they ask Catherine, what scares you the most? She says, Dylan. <laughs> Definitely Dylan. Dylan is scary for all of us, Catherine. Um, but what scares you the most? How would you answer that question? What scares you the most? What keeps you up at night? Because I believe we're afraid of what we feed. Uh, I know this because um, my wife loves the website WebMD. Anybody love WebMD? You're on WebMD? You're not admitting it in church. I know some of you. You love WebMD, okay? And, and, and WebMD freaks my wife out. Here's some things that my wife has thought she's had because of the website WebMD. She, she's told me that she's had a kidney failure. She's told me that she's got um, fungus growing in her sinus passages. She's told me she thinks she's got a brain tumor. And most recently, she told me that she thought her teeth were falling out. And I'm like, baby, why do, you, why do you think that? And she's like, because the internet said, if my symptoms are occasional tiredness, <laughs> occasional hunger, you know, some anxiety, occasional headaches, and I got it, and Joel, I got all those symptoms. I'm like, baby, every single person has every one of those symptoms. That's literally 100% of the population, right? But she sees it and, and she feeds it and it just kind of scares her. And we're afraid of what we feed. And so here, here's my point. If you're always afraid of like having a health scare, you know what you should do? You should go to the doctor and not the internet. If you're always afraid of like an economic collapse and the coronavirus and, and hurricanes, my dad calls them hurricanes, if you're always afraid of that stuff, you should stop watching the news. Like, you should break up with Dan Satterfield. 
And I know he said it would be like this, but you know, you're just a little too much Dan Satterfield in your life. If you're always afraid of like getting hurt, you should stop watching Grey's Anatomy. Because we're afraid of what we feed. And so we got a choice. We can either feed our faith or we can feed our fear. But what we feed grows. And so after you answer the question, like, what scares me the most? Follow that up with, how am I feeding that thing? How am I feeding that thing in my life? And so back to the story of the 12 spies. These, these 12 spies, they go into the promised land. They're there for 40 days, and, and, and they come back, and they're like, man, I'm seeing giants. I'm seeing giant walls. They are more scared than a tourist that sees a dolphin and thinks it's a shark. They are scared to death because they fed their fear for 40 days. And so this is what they say next. Ten of the 12 spies said, the land we traveled through and explored will devour anyone who goes to live there. Listen to this. All the people we saw were huge. Now, let me, let me just promise you, they saw short people too. But they're like, oh, everybody. Oh, they're all huge over there, okay? We even saw giants there, descendants of Anak. Next to them, we felt like, what's this word? Grasshoppers. They felt like grasshoppers. And it says, and that's what they, the giants, thought of us too. Everybody, every campus, just say this with me. They've been feeding their fears. They are feeding their fears, you guys. Listen, this is not what they saw. This is what they feel about what they saw. And fear is when we make a giant out of the grasshopper in our life. Have you ever, have you ever done that before? Made a giant out of a grasshopper in your life? Has anybody ever done that in this place? We do that, right? Why? Because what we feed, it grows. And by the way, if you're a Jesus follower, can I just remind you that you don't have to be afraid? Can I remind you that this tells us so many times not to fear? Do you know how many times this tells us not to fear? Anybody know? A lot would be a good answer, but 365 times. 365 times it says, don't fear. Thou shalt not fear. Nate, back there, you don't have to fear. 365 times. Do you know what theme Jesus talked about more than any other theme? What Was it love? Like, because, you know, Valentine's Day, was it love? Nope. Was it pray every day? Nope. It was fear. The most talked about theme that Jesus talked about was do not fear. He talked about that 21 times. And, and, and here's what fear is and here's what faith is. And we'll put this on the screen. Fear is when we make a giant out of a grasshopper in our life. Faith is when we remind the grasshopper in our life about the God in our life. Fear is when we got this grasshopper that we're turning it into a giant. But faith is when we say, hey, little grasshopper, I got a giant in my life. And so there is a big difference between faith and fear. I, I wrote a few things down about the difference between our faith and fear. And let me just read a couple of things to you. Fear says, I can't do it. Faith says, I can do all things through Christ. Fear says, what if that happens? Faith says, whatever happens, Jesus is with me. Fear says, what about my depression? Faith says, morning may last for a night, but joy is coming. Fear says, what about my bills? Faith says, what about my provider? Fear says, I will always be alone. Faith says, I will never leave you or forsake you. Fear says, nobody sees me. Faith says, I know the very numbers of hairs on your head, which for some of you, that's a big deal. Not so much for me, but for some of you, that's a big deal. Fear says, expect the worst. Faith says, the best is yet to come. Fear says, look at the size of my problems. Faith says, look at the size of my God. Faith is when we remind the grasshoppers in our life about the God in our life. And so, base your Millsboro, Base your Fenwick, base your Rehoboth. Maybe, just maybe, God sent a 37-year-old, balding, bad birthday planning pastor to tell you all today that God's courage and God's strength is greater than your greatest fear in your life. And so it is time to stop feeding your fears. And the second part of this is, if you want to amp up your faith, is to start feeding your faith. Start feeding your faith. Now, we just talked about grasshoppers and... um. 
I thought, you know, related to grasshoppers, I should introduce you to my dog. Now, I know Rehoboth knows about my dog, um, but you all may not know about my dog. So here's a picture of my dog, Eli, right here. It's Eli. You guys laughing at my dog? Listen, he can hear you. He can hear everything, all right? Like, now this is my dog, Eli. I feel like there's a lot I need to explain in this picture. Um, first off, Eli is a Chihuahua Dachshund mix, okay? Also known as a Chihuini. It's true. You can Google it, all right? Also known as cheap, and I'm cheap, and this dog was cheap, man, so I bought it. Um, so this is a, a, a Chihuini, and um, the second thing I need to, to, to point out is, first off, uh, Eli is 12 years old. And so he's 84 in dog years, which means he occasionally leaks. Okay, we're talking like incontinence issues, man. And so um, that's why uh, he is wearing a very stylish man diaper right here. It's actually called a belly band if you're looking for them on Amazon, okay? And, and it's a belly band because what it does is it, well, it covers up his chewini is what it does. Sorry, I'm never getting invited back here. Um, but Eli, so he rocks his stylish man diaper, uh, you know, you walk around the house. And my dog Eli is a night snacker. And what I mean by that is the moment me and my wife Stacy get in the bed, this little guy starts scrubbing hard. He goes right to his food bowl, full food bowl and he will, and I'm just looking at him eating and I'm thinking, bud, I don't think your belly band's going to hold. And he's, he's seven pounds, all right? But by the time he gets done violating his Rachel Ray food bowl, okay, he loves this thing. He is 10 pounds, no doubt, because his belly gets real round like a barrel. And then right before we're going to bed, um, Eli, he will waddle over to us in his, his man diaper to the, trying to get in the bed. And some of you are like, this just sounds like me on a Friday night. Listen, I don't need to know about it, all right? But I pick Eli up, and I put him in the bed. And then immediately after he's eating all this food, he'll look at me, and he'll be like, looking at me like, Dad, can you take this diaper off? I cannot breathe. And so that's why we let Eli sleep with us naked. <laughs> Which is not smart when your dog is incontinent, all right? Like, not smart. But my point is, my dog eats so much, his belly, you can see little Eli's belly grows. And, and when we, if we want to grow a lot, we got to eat a lot. Because whatever we feed grows. And so we're talking about faith and fear. My question to you is, are you feeding your faith? And so back to this story of the spies. All right, you got 10 of these spies who have been feeding their fears. They're scared to death. But the two spies I didn't tell you about were Joshua and Caleb. And Joshua and Caleb went to the exact same place. They saw the exact same things that the other 10 spies saw. But for 40 days, um, they fed their faith because here's what they came back and said. Again, they saw the same exact things. They said this in Numbers 14, starting in verse 7. The land we traveled through and explored is a wonderful land. There is milk and honey everywhere. Listen, and if the Lord is pleased with us, he will bring us safely into that land and give it to us. Do not rebel against the Lord, and don't be afraid of the people of the land. They have no protection. But, now we're going to all read this together on three, okay? Every campus is going to read this together with me on three. So, they have no protection, but one, two, three, the Lord is with us. The Lord is with us. I have a theory. I believe that the reason they could say the Lord is with us is because I think they walked around that promised land for 40 days and Joshua and Caleb just reminded themselves of all the good things that God had done in their life. I think for 40 days, they're walking around the promised land and Joshua's like, hey, Caleb, you remember when like God rescued us from slavery out of Egypt? And, and Caleb was like, yeah, and Joshua, you remember when we woke up that one morning and we walked into the desert and there was like all this manna all outside of our tent and God like basically dropped Uber Eats on us and gave us breakfast every day in the desert? And then I think Caleb was like, yeah, yeah. And Joshua, you remember when God was like our Google Maps and he sent us like this fire by night and this cloud by day to just guide us around the desert? And I think for 40 days, they just reminded themselves of all the good things that God had done in their life. And when you are facing fear, sometimes you just got to remind yourself of all the good things that God has done in your life. You got to stop and say, hey, self, if God did that back then, he can do it again. 
If God did that back there, he can do it up here. Because you just got to feed your faith and feed your faith and feed your faith. And I think that's what Joshua and Caleb did in that desert. And so um, there, there's uh, someone at our Rehoboth campus that's one of my favorite people. You're not supposed to have like favorite people in church, but I have a favorite, you know, maybe. Um, and her name's Miss Patsy. And we have a, we have a picture of Miss Patsy. Everybody loves Miss Patsy. There we go. So th- quick explanation. This is our team volunteer rally before um, the service starts on Sunday in Rehoboth. And Miss Patsy is right here, and she is doing the dab. Listen, things are going off the rails when Miss Patsy starts doing the dab in the team volunteer rally. And so Miss Patsy, she's just like this, this lady who's full of life. Now, I love Miss Patsy because Miss Patsy has more faith than anybody I've ever met. She's, she's the one who like says to me, like, Joel, you, you need to pray bigger prayers. You, you just need to have more faith, Pastor Joel. I'm like, are you doing anything in 20 minutes, Miss Patsy? You want to preach? Okay, like you're you're amazing. Like, she's this person who just got all this faith in her life. And so um, a while back, she was telling me that she had to stop taking her kidney medicine because it was giving her high blood pressure. And so she went to um, her, her kidney doctor, and the doctor walked in, and uh, the doctor said, Miss Patsy, I think it's good that you stopped taking that kidney medicine because it was giving you high blood pressure. But he said, I'm just obligated to tell you that because you're not taking your kidney medicine, your kidneys aren't protected. And Miss Patsy said to me, she's like, you, you want me to tell you what I told the doctor? I was like, yeah, I do, Miss Patsy. <laughs> And she said, I told that doctor, my kidneys may not be protected by your medicine, but my kidneys are protected by my God. And she said, let me just tell you something. My God knows more about my kidneys than you or any of your doctor friends because he made them. I'm like, you didn't say that, Miss Patsy. She's like, yes, I did. And then Miss Patsy just gave me the dab and walked away. I'm like, you are crazy. <laughs> and that's somebody who's been feeding her faith. Whatever we feed, it grows. And so in, the, in this story, these, these, uh, these two spies, Joshua and Caleb, they fed their faith. And because of that, they got to enter into the promised land. God let them into the promised land. But the 10 who amped up their fear and fed their fear, the other 10 spies never got into the promised land. They missed out on all that God had for them. And I think the point of the story for us today is that when we give faith our final vote and not our fear, that's when we get to experience all the goodness that God has for us in life. And I don't know about you, but the best things that have ever happened to me in my life are when I've given fear a voice, because I think fear can be wisdom, but when I've given faith the final vote. I was thinking about it this week. I was thinking about every major decision I've made in my life. There's been this battle between faith and fear. Can, can you relate to that? And, and so I was thinking about it this week. Like, like for instance, me and my wife, Stacy, um, we, we dated for five years before we got married, which she says was a long time. And every time it was Valentine's Day, we just went through Valentine's Day. At the end of our Valentine's Day day, if I didn't propose to her while we were dating, you know, she, she would say at the end of the day, I thought you were going to engage me. No pressure, right? No pressure at all, fellas. And like, but for me, I was so afraid. Oh, no, that's the wrong one. I was so afraid of getting married. And it's not because of my wife. Listen, if you see my wife, she is hot like fire. It is not because of her. I was afraid to get married because I thought, like, I don't know how to lead a family. I don't have any money. I can't provide for a chewini. <laughs> but I started praying about it. And I started talking to my wise friends about getting married. And I started reading about what a biblical wife looked like. And and 12 years ago, I stood on this stage right here and I married my dream girl. And let me just tell you, I am so glad that faith got the final vote because that's the best decision I've ever made. But then after we got married, Valentine's Day would roll around again. And Stacy, instead of saying like, oh, I'm sad you didn't engage me, she started saying, you think we could have some kids? I'm like, can we get a dog? Let's get a dog. I'll get you a two week. Little did I know my dog would need diapers just like kids need a diaper. I don't know. Anyway, so I was so afraid of having kids because I'm thinking, I'm not ready to have kids. And if you're here and you're wondering, like, am I ready to have kids? The answer is always no. <laughs> Nobody's ready for that, people. Now, listen, you can be more ready. You can have a job. 
Okay, but like nobody is ready to have kids. And so I was scared to death of having kids, but I, I started praying about it. And I started talking to my friends who were dads, and I started to get peace in my life. And then me and Stacy went on our five-year anniversary to Mexico. And let me just tell you, what happens in Mexico does not always stay in Mexico, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm never coming back. I'm never getting invited. Anyway, but my first daughter was born nine months later. And let me just tell you, it's been one of the best decisions I've ever made. And then one month before my first kid was born, I was sitting in a board meeting here at the church, and we were trying to figure out who should be the campus pastor at a Rehoboth campus. And my dad said, Joel, I think you should be the campus pastor at the Rehoboth campus. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, Dad, that's funny. Well, you're not joking, are you? Dad, gone. You are not joking. And all of a sudden, I had so much fear. Guys, guys I went to school for business. I would never spoken a message in my entire life, okay? The very first time I gave announcements was on this stage. This is a true story. When I walked off the stage after giving announcements, the first thing somebody said to me was, nice try. <laughs> true story. I'm like, Dad, you want me to lead the campus? Do we need to do a drug test? What is wrong with you? No. But I started praying about it. I started talking to my wife about it. I started talking to the wise people in my life. And on November 3rd, 2013, I preached my very first message in Rehoboth with a two-week-old at home. Lord, help us all people. But I'm so glad that faith led the way. And in life, there's this battle between fear and faith. And for me, the best things that have happened in my life are when I've given fear a voice, but I've given faith the final vote. Because you can either listen to your fears or you can listen to your faith. And maybe you're here today and you're like, man, I got some crazy stuff happening in my life. I'm scared right now. And let me just tell you, keep feeding your faith. Keep coming to church. Keep praying. Keep uh, talking to wise friends about it. Get off of Facebook and get into God's book and just give faith a vote. Give faith a vote and help that faith grow in your life. I'm going to end with this. I just wanted to read you, as we lead today, a few of the 365 times that this tells us not to fear. And the reason I want to do this is because I think some of you need to be pumped up when you lead today that you don't have to fear. And so buckle up. Here's what this says about not fearing. Fear not, for God is with you. Fear not, for God hears you. Fear not, for the battle belongs to the Lord. Fear not, for God is coming to save you. Fear not, for he is here to help you. Fear not, for he will strengthen you. Fear not, for he will uphold you with his righteous right hand. Fear not, for the Lord personally goes ahead of you. Fear not, for he will never leave you. Fear not, for he will never abandon you. Fear not, for the Lord knows your name. Fear not, for he will protect you. Fear not, for he knows the number of hairs on your head. Fear not, for he is out to bless you. Fear not, for he will heal you and give you a great reward. Fear not the powers of people or of hell because he has overcome them once and for all. Fear not because nothing can separate you from his love. Fear not for nothing can separate you from his future. Fear not because he's given you the victory. Fear not for it's his pleasure to give you the kingdom. Fear not because he's the first and the last, the alpha and the omega, the king of kings. Death couldn't defeat him. The grave couldn't hold him. And the world cannot overcome him. Fear not, for Jesus is alive today and forever. And he is our reason not to fear. Come on, people. We don't have anything to be afraid of. So don't live in fear. Don't let fear rule your life. You got to fill your heart and your mind with faith. You got to let faith Feed your heart and your mind and have courage like Joshua and Caleb and say, God, I'm going to let you lead my life. I'm going to let you take over my life. And listen, I am not going to have any fear and I'm going to trust you and I am not going to let fear rule my life anymore. And if you're here today and you got some fear, listen, I get that. I get that. But keep letting God and his goodness lead the way and keep feeding your faith because what we feed grows. And I believe the best things in your life sit right on the other side of giving faith the final vote and pushing through that greatest fear in your life. Let me pray for you guys. Jesus, I'm so thankful for Joshua and Caleb and their courage because, God, I think a lot of us can relate to the other 10 spies who kind of like were afraid and they fed their fears. But, God, I just pray that we'll be inspired today by the faith that Joshua and Caleb had 
to push through that and to give maybe fear a voice, but give faith the final vote. And so God, I just pray that you'll, you'll give us peace in this room. I just pray that you'll just still the fear that's in our life and just replace that with your faith and your peace. And whatever that means for the people in this room, whether it's going back to college or making a phone call to have a, uh, a conversation with somebody they've been kind of put off. I don't know what it means, but God, I do know that you've told us more than any other theme in the Bible, do not fear. Do not fear. And so I just pray that we'll walk out of here without a spirit of fear. What an amazing message. Thank you all so much for joining us for Church Online this morning for the best of Bayshore. We pray that God spoke to you through the message this morning. As a reminder, we are not meeting in person until January 17th. Once again, that's January 17th. And last but not least, it's important now more so than ever to connect with us online. And to do that, we want you to be all in. To be all in, simply go to bayshore.online and click all in. That's all from us here at Bayshore. We love you guys. Have a blessed week.